Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Student Showcase series, where I talk with many of our amazing VFX apprentices and the journey that they've had so that you can learn about how to navigate your own journey through this industry. Today, I'm talking with DeAndre Martin. How's it going, DeAndre? Hello, I'm good. It's good to see you. So DeAndre has recently gotten his first job at High Moon Studios. And I'm super excited to chat with him about how he went from first discovering effects to getting this job. So let's dive right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you discover effects in the first place? And what was that journey like? Uh, this one is pretty interesting. So I know it's like back before I play games, visual effects was always something that kind of caught my attention. I knew I wanted to work in some type of video games, but I didn't know that you could do visual effects as like a primary thing. It wasn't until I went to Florida Tech and I think I went there for like during Roma the first time, did a bit of 3D modeling, that's what I was doing. After I graduated, I kind of went to um, Valencia for two years and I was like, okay, not really feel in college, maybe I should go back to the tech school, go back. So luckily the professor, the new professor there, he used to be a VFX artist and um, the course kind of taught you a bit of everything. And he's like, okay, I want to include VFX because there's not many people out there that do VFX stuff. And then once I got to that part, I was like, can you actually do this as a career? I'm like, oh, you're like, yeah, there's like plenty of job openings out there that people like love. Like, I, I enjoy doing this. It's like, the more people interested is good. So that's when I fell in love with it. Kind of self-taught myself for like the next year or so. And the way, way I found on VFX Apprentice actually was through, I believe, LinkedIn. At the time, I couldn't... um. I couldn't afford like to get the class at the time, so I kind of still practiced until I got to that point. And mm -hmm. um, thanks to someone I ran into, it was um, this is actually a funny way I ran into this. The streamer I met, um, I watched his stream. His name was Eve. He was like a Smash Bros. commentator. Mm -hmm. I told him I was applying for a job somewhere. But, yeah, I happened to know this guy. I'm like, how do you just know everybody? Apparently, you just know people from Nintendo. You know people from Blizzard. I'm like, how do you just know people randomly? He's like, I can put in a good word for you. So once he did that. <laughs> I connected with that guy and I kind of been showing my work from that point on. And because VFX artist from him actually was taking your course, he was like, oh yeah, you're taking this course. I'm like, oh, I was thinking about taking it, but you know, um, I wasn't sure like which one to get exactly. So I told him which one I was probably going to get. And he actually bought me the course to VFX and friends. I was like, oh, I'm like, wow. are you serious? I'm like, I don't even work for this, your company yet. He just bought me the course. Like, I'm like, I know you're going to do great things. You had seen very high potential me. So Point. That's when I can take cool. my career from be best apprentice. So you spent all this time and money in school, and turns out you just needed someone to buy you an online class to get you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm sure that all that education in school, you know, with it, you said you had an effects teacher and everything, which is super rare. It's rare to have a professor that was a, a, an effects artist in games. Um, I'm sure it had a big influence on you and in preparing you and helping you. Because I noticed, like, you did, you had a very distinct style. We're going to be showing lots of your work throughout this mm -hmm. video for people to see, but you have a very distinct sort of uh, flair in your work that is definitely your own. Like, where did that come from? Was that developed in school? You just like the flat graphic shapes. Is it inspired by any of your favorite games? I think, I think for sure, like, I really didn't get into my own style until like probably more so into like 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, I think most games like I was kind of experimenting first, but I know um one of my favorite games for sure, Dragon Ball Fighters has amazing visual effects. Like Smash Bros has like amazing effects as well. Those are games that kind of like took inspiration from. Yeah. Started to like play around with um what they were usually called like cartoony anime style effects. Cause I just liked how how fluid the animations were and how good they made them look where the game is 3D but it still make it look 2D. So I kind of right. started like adapting my own style and playing around with that and just getting more familiar. Because the, the funny thing is, I actually also wanted to work on like um, animation as well. So learning between both like VFX and animation, that was like yeah. the best thing for me to do. And that's why I enjoyed it the most. That's awesome. Yeah, every time I know you came to the live sessions with us and it was like, oh, that's, I know that's DeAndre's work without even looking mm -hmm. at who <laughs> posted it. Like very clear bold graphic styles and i always love that about your work i was like never stop being bold and crazy and over the top and like i think that's paid off for you so you have this job now at 
High Moon, tell us about like that connection because the kind of stuff you do and the kind of stuff they do, it's a little different. How did that work out? Like why, what was appealing to you or what was appealing to them about you as you were replying there? I think um, the one, one of the main things, which I'm pretty sure uh, someone else said this at another interview I got as well. They said the main thing they, I think when I asked the question, like which effect you like the most in my portfolio, they said they can't even pick one because the main thing that they liked the most about all my effects was the basic fundamentals like of VFX in there. You got motion, shape, color, animation, like all the basic principles mm -hmm. is really strong. And once you use those basic principles to, to make a big crazy effect like that, if you nail all those points, that's what makes an effect so good because this is why senior get like effects like that. They have a, they have mastered these basic fundamentals. So people who try to attempt to do the bigger stuff, but you don't have a grasp on the basic stuff, you're not gonna be able to pull it off as easily. You're gonna miss like certain points. And that's why the community has been really helpful because I would get feedback and they would like be really helpful. So like that. I'm like, oh my, like, oh, how did I miss this? Like, you know, like it's easy to miss the basic stuff because you're focusing on so much at once. Mm -hmm. So like going to their style. That, that definitely like a lot different, but I think um yeah <laughs> it really helped because when they gave me like a, a test to like to not make something with the textures I already had, I noticed they said the same thing, like you have like a good grasp of basic fundamentals, like how VFX work because we gave you this task to do and they actually did a pretty good job at doing it, even from moving between two different styles. But I think just having a basic fundamental like the VFX and mastering those will take you a long way in the future. That's so cool. So tell me, like, what is it that you really take away from this, um, this experience of learning the fundamentals the way that you did, and then applying all around? I know that you had, you know, a lot of different ideas of where you might go. I had no idea. Honestly, I was like, this guy's going somewhere. I have no idea where he's headed. But mm -hmm. he's, he's like on a war path. He's on a mission to do some great things. Like, what would you say to students? coming behind you who maybe have some of the same interests and passions for like, you know, animation and really like punchy, intense, awesome styles. What's worked for you and what do you think might work for them? Uh, probably definitely. So probably especially going for animation and style like that, definitely just kind of like study a lot of games that have very punchy animations, like, like crazy animation styles. Like for example, one of the recent ones, um, New Demon Slayer game by Star Connect 2, like mm -hmm. they have some amazing, like really good 2D, like visual effects, and even like 3D ones as well that just like look so good. And what you kind of like, what you kind of do is kind of break down all those effects, mm -hmm. look really close to it, and to see, see what strategies they use to make these effects look so good because, you know, that, that's something that we, we all do, honestly. We kind of like, you know, look, I use like a cheat scene a little bit, like, okay, what do they do to do this? Okay, now I want to do my own version of this. I have a better mm -hmm. idea. And Actually, some effects I've made, um, made like fan art or Smash Brothers, like um, hit effects. Even though you're making like fan art yeah. for an effect, you're taking, what I really do with that is take it and like learn their time and learn what they're doing motion and stuff and kind of like get a better understanding of this. Even though you're kind of like, you know, copying it in a way and like make it, but kind of still making your own, use that knowledge you get from it. Like, okay, this is the time they use. I didn't know I could use this type of time and with the hit effect or something, or I could do this with fire or do this with type like water and stuff. Mm. Because using that strategy, another project I worked on when it came to making a hit effect for a certain character, it actually turned out way better than I thought because I already had a basic grasp of like how time and works with hit effects in a fighting game. So it's funny how it is really. <laughs> yeah, it's funny yeah. how we can surprise ourselves. Like oh, I know this now because I've been practicing it for so much time that now it's it's clear how it works. That's cool. Yeah, so you, you have to really like, really just like break down everything. Break down everything, really take advice from people and people give you feedback, take mm -hmm. the feedback to value and like, you know, you can't get too hurt because you worked so hard and stuff and like now they're breaking down your effect, but they're doing it for a good reason because you, if you want the best of the best on your portfolio, you got to make sure you get feedback from people with more experience as well that can kind of help you say, okay, like this is good, but it fixes one slight part and it can be perfect. You can honestly right. fix a lot of stuff that way. Man, that's cool. So that experience of working with them, you are in your room. I love your room, by the way, it looks amazing. <laughs> Thank and you. uh, you're working from home. Yeah. You're working remotely for them. So that's pretty sweet. A lot of people are curious about, 
Can I work remotely for game studios? Can, do I need to be on site? How did they work that out with you? What's your current situation? So our situation, so we actually just had um, a meeting a couple of days ago. They were going to open office like back in, was it in January? But mm. they kind of pushed it off now because of what's going on. So the mm -hmm. situation for us is that they know everyone is like situation is unique. So once they do decide to open office to everyone else, they'll kind of like talk to everyone individually and kind of see what situation that can kind of work out for people as far as like trying to get them to move close to the office. But as of right now, we can't stay where we're at. Um, we don't have to, if you want to come into the office, you can. You can do like hybrid work if you're like in the area, but we're fully like remote right now. We don't have to like move just yet until like once they open. And that's what I said, they won't just throw us out there either. So once well, they kind of like open office. <laughs> What do you think? Are you excited to move out there and, and go work in person at the studio? Or do you prefer to work at home? I, honestly, I would love to just meet people in person. I think it's like a really valuable experience. I do enjoy working from home a lot, but I think nothing can beat like, you know, the in the office experience, especially when you're someone that's yeah. still kind of like learning. Mm -hmm. I think nothing beats like meeting people in person and getting, being able to get like, you know, work with people together in the office setting. And I know you're a really strong communicator, so I'm sure it hasn't been too difficult being remote. Oftentimes it's the ones who struggle to communicate virtually, but I know in all of our like sessions, I'm like, oh yeah, he's, he's good. He's got it. Like receiving the feedback, uh, seeking the feedback, giving up good updates, all very important when you're not in person, because it's just a little more burden on, on us, on you to be proactive of like sharing and all that stuff. Right. So. And I worked on a lot of like projects that are completely remote and it definitely is possible like to have a good team with like a remote legacies have to be proactive, like be able to like communicate with people and as you know, be like determined to work and like get to get the work done. So mm -hmm. you can't get distracted a lot more easily when you are at home, but kind of the same thing with <laughs> school. True. If you're doing school work from home, you got to apply yourself. Say, okay. It's time to work, you know, no attractions. I got to like work on this. Yeah. 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 Well, that's great. So man, it's so great chatting with you. Are there any final words of advice or things that you want to say to anyone who's watching before we go? When you start your career early, don't try to tackle big flashy effects in the beginning when you have no idea what you're doing, especially where you don't have that much knowledge because there's a lot of effects I look back at now. I'm like, they turned out absolutely horrible and I can't even look at them anymore. And mm -hmm. that's what's going to happen because you don't have a basic grasp of fundamentals yet. So you're not going to be ready to do the bigger effects when it comes to that. So I know it's fun to do the big flashy stuff. You want to get to it as soon as possible, but I would say start small first, start with maybe a couple of hit effects, do like a little fire, do some water, like just practice some, some animations to like study, like the basic stuff first. Once you do like, maybe like around five to 10 effects or something. Not, not that you even be building your portfolio, but it's kind of like experiment. Right. And if you want to get one on your portfolio, try to pick your favorite one and then tackle it afterwards. But don't try to go through what I went through because it would take a lot longer when you're trying to do all these big effects but not turn out right because you don't understand everything that goes into making these big flashy effects. That's why seeing ours is take care of the bigger effects because they have a, a better grasp of it. That would be my biggest advice to do where people starting out. I know, I know we all do. I do with music too. So I think I agree, but also when I saw you doing these like really huge things without fully understanding the basics first, only a part of me wanted to stop you because on the one hand, I saw your passion and I saw your drive to go big and you're putting in the time to do it. I think sometimes a new student doesn't realize how much time it takes to do something more complex. And so rather than doing the simple things, they get excited about a complicated thing and then they get into it and they're like, Oh, I'm going to have to spend like six more hours on this to finish it. I don't want to do that. But mm -hmm. what I saw with you was you're like, yeah, I'll spend six more hours and you did it. Like you spent the needed time to really see it through, to really get it where it needed to be. And that's a credit to you. Um, so I would just say it's okay to take on complex stuff early on if you really have what it takes to follow through with it. But if you're more likely to get discouraged because you're like, oh shoot, what have I gotten myself into? 
it's okay to back up and, you know, like if we're like the rest of us, we're not like mm -hmm. DeAndre with work ethic and we're a little bit more like, I just kind of want to like do this in my free time and have fun learning. I think that's like a smoother path to do less complex to more complex. But yeah, all the time I see students that are just driven that are like, screw it. I'm going to do the biggest possible thing, get myself into a mess and work backwards mm -hmm. from there. And I, you, I, I don't think there's any wrong way to learn. If you're learning and practicing, I think it's productive. Yeah, honestly, I like seeing that too. A lot of the students that are doing some pretty crazy stuff. So that definitely, definitely just take it, take it at the level that you think you're ready to like take it. If you, if you know you're not, because there's been times where I do an effect, I'm like, okay, I have no idea what I want to do. All I did was back up for a minute, take a break, and just kind of like refresh my mind. Don't try to keep tackling it, and then you mm -hmm. frustrate yourself, and you're now you're like, okay, now I'm frustrated. I don't want to do anything else anymore. That, that's the main advice I want to give is like, you know, kind of take a step back and take a break. Because sometimes when you refresh your mind, take a break, you'd be surprised when you come back. You're like, wow, I actually, everything is opening up now. Like everything is coming together. I know what I want to do. Yeah, 100%. All right. Well, we got to end, but it's been amazing having you. I'm so excited to see what you do next. And don't forget us in the community, DeAndre. I want, I want to see you popping in every now and then, <laughs> even though you got a job now. So, Yeah, I definitely will. I love seeing the amazing work in the community. There's a lot of great people. So anyone who wants to get started, I'd highly recommend the VF as a apprentice course. It'd be a, a lot of amazing people. The community is amazing. And trust me, this program does work. You'll definitely get if you're determined enough and want to put in hard work, you're going to see results pretty fast. Cool. I appreciate that. So is it all right if people reach out to you? Is it cool if we link your stuff in the description? Oh, yeah, for sure. So people can reach out to me on like LinkedIn and stuff. I also do have a Twitter page. I don't use like Twitter too much for professional stuff, but you know, you just want to like hang out or just talk to me as well. And also you can leave my Discord here as well if people want to ever reach out for questions and stuff. I love helping people out just so they know they take the nice. right path and enjoy their career. Nice. We'll get that in there for people. So thank you so much and you have a good one. Bye. All right. You too. Bye.